morning. Good morning. And, uh, hope you're having a good Monday morning so far as kind of how long it's been for you. So I thought maybe you just got up. Um, we got a thunderstorm here. Which is kind of cool. Oh. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to read our song for the day and talk about it. Um, it's not a very long song today. So uh, we're going to chat about that. Um, Which psalm is it? Sorry, Psalm 47. I am too. I'm waking up this morning still. Psalm 47. And am I just reading it? Yep. Is there no feelings in it? Is there even any feelings? Nope. Okay. All right. Psalm 47. For the choir director, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a jubilant cry. For the Lord, the Most High, is awe-inspiring, a great king over the whole earth. He subdues people under us and nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God ascends among shouts of joy, the Lord with the trump sound of trumpets. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our king, sing praise. Sing a song of wisdom, for God is king of the whole earth. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on, the whole, on his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have assembled with the people of the God of Abraham. For the leaders of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. God, uh, even though this psalm is short, it reminds us to sing praises to you. Uh, so we do that. We, we lift up our voices and we sing praises to you, uh, Lord. Though I'm not literally singing to you, I am I'm praising you and praising who you are, Lord. But there are times when we do can't we can't hold back and we have to just sing your praises as the psalmist here is doing. Lord, I pray that as we study this psalm, our hearts will be uh, will be shifted towards singing your praises. And we pray in your name, Amen. Um, yeah. Uh, thoughts from the beginning. Um, well, this psalm it requires audience participation. Uh, the very first, the, like the opening to the psalm, the psalm here is a direct plea to the reader to join in and to join in with clapping. Uh, it says, clap your hands, all you peoples, shout to God with a jubilant cry. Um, so yeah, we see right here at the beginning of this, this psalm, there's this uh, there's this plea to the, the to the reader to join in on the praises that are happening that are going to happen throughout this song, and so uh, throughout these praises, he gives a little bit of a tiny bit of reasoning as to why um, he's just shouting these praises and he's singing the praises. So let's let's look at those. Yeah, um, the the reasons why they're shouting. Yeah, so it starts in verse 2 with the word for. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a lot about God's character is what they're rejoicing. So verse 2, for the Lord, the Most High, is awe-inspiring. That's their reason. A great king over the whole earth. Um, and then it just talks about what he's done. He subdued people um, and nations. He chose uh, for us, meaning for Israel, an inheritance, um, and he loves uh, uh, Israel. Um, yeah, what else you see? Um, so he go he jumps back to the praises then um, in six and seven, and then he reiterates what he says in verse uh, two through four uh, again in verse eight through nine. It says, God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. Uh, the nobles of the peoples have assembled with the peoples of the God of Abraham. For the leaders of the earth uh, belong to God. He is greatly exalted. So if he kind of reiterate and expands upon uh, this God being a great king over the whole earth and being awe-inspiring. Uh, so, yeah, that goes, that goes on to just reinforce the reasoning that it, in this particular psalm, his reasoning for God's 
deserving of praises and mm -hmm. and singing for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. Um, yep. That was great. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to say? Yeah, I don't know what I was going to say to that other than this is a short psalm and it's very repetitive and um, but uh, it's important because as we say we study the Psalms and we learn more about God's character um, uh, I'm intrigued by verses 3 and 4 to really understand what that's discussing and what that's talking about maybe a little bit more in context um, like what does it mean for he for God to subdue people under us and nations under our feet he chose for us our inheritance, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. Um, I think that's referring to the many times when God um, delivered the the Israelite people from an enemy, um, or they needed to go somewhere, and there were those who were against them and wanted to attack them. But through God's work, he was the one that um, fought them and kept them from destroying Israel. Um, and I'm really struggling this morning. Um, do you have other thoughts about these things? Uh, yes, since I, since I believe that uh, 8 and 9 are him expanding upon what he was talking about in verses 2 and 3, I think what he's saying, especially when he says, um, for the leaders of the earth belong to God, he is greatly to be exalted. I think he's, he's referring to the fact that, um, that any, that every nation that has risen and fallen is because God is in control. Mm -hmm. So that, so God is the one that is orchestrating all that is happening. Uh, and we can see that, we see that in the Old Testament where the Lord Will, will bring in a nation that conquers Israel, but then God is also the one that will free Israel from that nation. Mm -hmm. Or so He is. He's pointing out that all the the leaders of the earth, um, God is in control of them. He is. They belong to the Lord, um, and so um, He's saying because of that, He is the one who can subdue the peoples. He is the one who can take the nations and put them under Israel's feet. Um, he doesn't use the word Israel. He doesn't use Jacob, uh, which is the same. But I think it's really going to the point of God's uh, immense sovereignty that he has control over all of the inhabitants of the earth, all of the leaders of the earth. And his result, the result of that is, is praise. So I think that's kind of the major characteristic, like you said, uh, of God here that is deserving of, is the reason that they're praising him in this psalm is that his, his immense sovereignty and the ability to control all the inhabitants of the earth. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah, this repetition about the nations and the kings and uh, who God loves um, is um Um, yes, I'm just noting the repetition of these things, which is helpful to do. Um, I'm then considering, uh, just thinking about how it can seem unfair <laughs> um, that God is over all the nations and he does rise up and bring down other nations and the leaders, but they are all under God's control. Um, and that it can seem unfair that some of them are being subdued and destroyed. Um, but God is over. The leaders of the earth belong to God. Um, he is the one over it all. So, um, yeah, I don't... Um, verse 4, 2, he chooses for us our inheritance. Um, the pride of Jacob whom he loves um, I'm just really intrigued by that language that 
God chooses our inheritance. Um, maybe I'm just thinking about myself a little too much right now, but just considering how it's really not us who choose what our outcome will be, but God chooses what we will inherit, what we will um, receive um, from the nations, from wherever, um, but he is the one who chooses for our inheritance. And the reason for that is it's um, uh, out of his love, who he loves um, for these people. Yeah. Uh, so another thing that is, is mentioned in in both of these uh, descriptions of God's characteristic of sovereignty is his relationship to a people, a certain people group. Um, so first it says the pride of Jacob, so that is Israel, and then the the psalmist here they they refer to the people as the people of the God of Abraham, which are the same people just just named differently as the people of the God of Abraham. And so it seems like um, the describing this relationship between God and a certain people group, that being Israel, and how God is in his sovereignty, because we can see him controlling over controlling nations, is in the end, so in, in, in like the net, is like a net win for his people. So it seems like that it's his people are going to be the ones in the end victoriously. Um, we can look at history and see that they didn't win every single battle that they ever fought. But it, it, but the way that this is written is that like in the end, like so, as as a whole, like God is working for his people, uh, the certain people the people of, of Israel, and so as a Christian. Um, one who believes in Christ, we are, the Bible uses the word adopted, we are now adopted in to that people group, um, so this also rings true for us as well, anyone who have put their faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting, verse 9, the nobles of the people have assembled with the people of the God of Abraham, so it's this combining of these, um, the nations, the leaders of the, the nations, the other non-Israeli people, are joining with the people of God. And then the next sentence saying, for the leaders of the earth belong to God, that, that God can bring those two people together, can join with, um, that those who um, are not serving the Lord can join with those who are serving the Lord, because God, they all belong to God. Um, so we can see this unity that happens because of God's work. Um, as I'm thinking about this psalm, I think this could be one of those psalms that's easy to just kind of read over and move on because, like, oh, right, we should praise the Lord. Um, oh, yeah, like, cool, God subdues things, God's over all the things. Like, it, it can feel, like, pretty basic. Um, but I am always struck by these psalms where it's just a lot of praise of thinking, like, do I really praise the Lord like that? Um, do I clap my hands and shout to God with a jubilant cry? Um, do I recognize that God is awe-inspiring, a great king over the whole earth? Um, am I just singing praises, singing praises to our king, singing a song of wisdom? Um, and with shout of sound of trumpets, like that's such a not the way that I think we often uh, worship and praise the Lord. Um, we're much more subdued. Um, but the call here is to just be so excited about who God is and wanting to give Him honor and glory. And so. Um, I don't have a very practical application of what that looks like, but maybe at first it just starts in my heart of shifting my worship to be much more jubilant and um, expressive um, to the Lord. Yeah, and I, I think that it's it's actually more pointed than that, because uh, this 
the song here is not just a general praise. He gives specific reasons that this, that this praise should be given to God, and that is due to his ability uh, to rule over the nations um, and the leaders of the nations and subdue the nations and also bring the nations together um, and his relationship with his people. So I think that, yes, we could, we could say that, yes, we should be praising the Lord more, which is a true statement. But the, the psalmist here is, is giving very specific reasons that we should consider to praise the Lord for. And I think um, that's important to actually think about <laughs> this specific reason, God's, the, God's sovereignty over the earth, his ability to, to the, his ownership over the leaders of the earth. And I think that's a reason that we should consider to give God God praise for. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I do agree. In, like in general, we should praise the Lord more. But also in this psalm, he's picking very specific reasons for, for praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can I make a, a more pointed application? Sure. Um, yeah. So I think something that this that could be considered here um, is talking about the rulers of the nations. And right now we have rulers of our nation that you may or may not agree with and there are people who I mean we had elections coming up right yeah, yeah. there are um other leaders of our nation who you, you may or may not want to vote for and um i appreciate this song because it reminds us that um all of these leaders belong to god um and that when we start to put our hope and our trust in who our voted officials are or we put our hope in um who the leader of, even in a smaller scale, even the leader, the the head of your company or your own boss or whatever leaders there are in your life, that God is over them all. Um, and as we, we can read in Judges, Joshua and Judges and the Kings and l learn all about all kinds of kings and rulers that there have been and some that are good and some that are not so good. But at the end of the day, the Lord is over all of them. The Lord is over all our leaders, um, and he is powerful enough to use all of them. Um, and we know that we can still praise the Lord for all his goodness and wisdom. Um, and that, in like in verse 4, he chooses for us our inheritance. Um, now, that is talking about the nation of Israel, but through Christ, for those who are in Christ and love the Lord and, and want to serve and obey Christ, um, that does include us. He chose for us our inheritance. So um, there is a hopeful promise there as well. Yeah, and just like as a reminder, this isn't just a, like a relief or like a phew, yeah, good thing, God's in control uh, because I don't like this leader or anything like that. Nope, in fact, he says, clap your hands, all you peoples, shout, sing, this is not just a, oh, I'm relieved that God's in control. No, it's, I am so excited that God is the one that is in control. I'm shouting, I'm clapping my hands, I'm singing. So it, it carries this idea of extreme joy that mm -hmm. the Lord is the one who's in control. Not just this relief that you have like a, a crutch of the Lord, but rather that we are so excited and so overjoyed mm -hmm. that the Lord is the one who is in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's definitely a different mindset of just having this relief or this peace, which we should have, but rather this overjoy and excitement mm -hmm. for the for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's all I got. Any yeah. other thoughts? No. Don't really have any other thoughts. Alright. And then let me pray and we'll we'll end this. Um, dear Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to study it and to read it. Um and to really try to wrestle with and understand what you're revealing here. Lord, we do, we really do praise and rejoice in your name that you are in control. That it's not really that we just are praising for that, so it gives us a sigh of relief. But Lord, we just praise that you, the king of the universe, the one who has created all things, continues to rule over all things. Um, Lord, as um, we see the nations and we see our leaders, would you remind us that you are over them too? Um, and would our response be joy and praise um, for your name? Uh, Lord, I just pray this upon all those who are listening and beyond. 
um, that we would continue to know you more, um, know your character, and that it would result in great joy and praise. Um, I pray all of this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Have a good Monday. <laughs>